K-State gets back in the win column with an 84-74 victory over BYU on Saturday. The Cats led wire to wire. They got up big early. There were some moments where they let BYU push it again. K-State even came close to having a couple of cracks at a 19-point lead. Couldn't do it. It got hairy late when K-State struggled to get the ball in. Amy Bonner and Kelly Self, they didn't know if they wanted to call a foul or not. The officiating was atrocious today for a game that was not decided by officiating. Very rarely can you say that, but those guys were terrible. The only guys playing a good game today was K-State, which has been hard to say over the last few weeks. But K-State came out, and you, you go and look, the turnover number, low for them, only 13. They shot the ball incredibly well, and that really is the key today, is K-State made shots. And before I hand it off to Drew, I'll say this. What Jerome Tang said after the game is more along the lines of what I've been looking for, for from him all season long, and it's, yeah, we made shots today, but you make shots when you get the right shots. And I think that's something that early on in the season, specifically after the Nebraska game, he wanted to chalk it up just to miss shots. Yes, you missed a lot of shots because you weren't taking a lot of good shots in that game. Today, different story. They got the right shots, they executed, and they got a much needed win over BYU. And now K-State has a winnable game on Monday and you can start to paint the picture that maybe there's some life in this season. But we'll get to that in a little bit. As for what happened with K-State beating BYU, what stood out to you, Drew? Basketball is just an easy game when you make shots. It's true. I mean, it, it, it's pretty simple. When you make shots and don't turn the ball over, it's crazy what can happen. I, I said it kind of at the end of the BYU game and Provo and on the instant reaction. I, I, I'm not in love with this BYU team. I will be picking whoever they play in the first round of the NCAA tournament because they are very matchup oriented, and if shots aren't falling, BYU is not a very good team. Yes and shots weren't falling today, and Casey did a good job of taking advantage of the, the athletic mismatch because, to be honest, BYU is not a very athletic team at all, and K-State really took advantage of that in, on offense and got switches and got players that they wanted on the players that were doing really well. Arthur Kaluma had probably three or four possessions in the second half where he was being guarded by Ali Khalifa, and that, that's a major mismatch. And because of that, that caused BYU to go zone for a little bit, and the zone wasn't working either. So BYU just had no answer for K-State today. And, and you bring up the zone, like that's such a good point there because what K-State did when BYU went zone was they immediately executed on it. I think, you know, they, they went to it, they changed it up, they ended up going 1-3-1 at one point, and they found Tyler Perry in the corner. And not only was it good basketball, Tyler Perry made the shot. And that's something that they had seen struggles from him with, where Tyler Perry's gotten a lot more flack this year than he's, he deserved. But he has had moments, early in the KU game in particular, he got good looks, missed the shots today. He got the good look, he made it when they needed it, and that is such a key part too. It's not just getting the right looks, it's actually executing when they're right there in front of you. And I thought, for the most part, everybody that K-State put on the floor today did a really nice job of that. I think it was big for K-State to start the way that they did, and specifically to have it be Tyler Perry carrying the load in the first half. He started making three of his first or making three of his first four three pointers and had ten points before I believe it was under sixteen timeout. Yeah. Like he, he came out on fire and you still don't get the consistency that you would like to see. But it also wasn't Perry just like chucking shots up. Like he only took eight shots I believe for the entire game. So he he was very efficient when he took shots and knew when to take shots. And and I'll I'll also hand this to Arthur Kluma, that, that he knew how the game was being officiated. He knew that if you were driving, like crap. If 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 if, the, if you were driving in today, if you're driving in today, you're probably going to get a foul call. And he had 12 free throw attempts. I mean, it, when you get to the free throw line, don't turn the ball over and make shots. It's amazing what what can happen. Yeah, those final numbers for K State ended up work, working out like this. They were 27 of 48 from the floor, so they were well over 50 percent. Seven of 15 from three, and they shot. 31 free throws, 15 more than BYU. And if you think back to the first time they played the Cougars, that was one of the things that we talked about going into it is K-State's good at getting to the line at that point in time. BYU struggles at it, and K-State, that was a big flaw in that game. Today, they came through, they made the numbers hold true, and they did a great job at the line for the most part. They had a handful of misses here and there, but you know, a handful of them, five come from guys that aren't normally good free throw shooters. So you can live with that. The other guys knocked him down when it mattered, and they played well. And Arthur Kaluma, now, you know, career highs against BYU both times he's played him. So if you're looking for a matchup K-State might want in the Big 12 tournament, it might be BYU. It also big for K-State, again, to hold BYU down from three. This is a very uh, uh, an offense that's very oriented around the three-point shot and 
more of like a volume three-point shooting team than I would consider efficient. Yeah. The, and today, it was a big-time volume game for BYU. BYU shot over double the amount of threes that K-State did and only uh, and made six. Yeah. And K-State made seven on 15 attempts. So K-State won the three-point line. They won the free throw battle. They didn't turn the ball over a ton. And they were efficient shooting from two even. So it was an all-around, probably the best performance K-State's had in conference play. I'd, I'd even say that this was better than the KU game. I, I think I think so. I think this is probably the best that K-State has played. And the other point, too, like BYU, there was that one possession where they missed three threes, and they were all pretty good looks. That felt like a turning point in the game. K-State comes through, gets the win. So that's, that is a huge deal for them. And now this win sets up a scenario where you look at them and they're, they've got their sixth win in conference play. There are now, what, uh, there would be four games left yes. in the conference slate. So Monday at home against West Virginia, at Cincinnati next Saturday, then next Tuesday at KU, and then they finish with senior day here against Iowa State. You're going to have the opportunity for good wins, and you're going to have the opportunity for two wins at home. You can start to paint the picture and buy in that K-State is going to put themselves at least back in the conversation. Now, I will warn people, one win – is not enough to erase what took place over the last eight games for K-State. But there is no reason to think that this team cannot be what they did today because they've shown it at earlier points in the season. And I've always thought, as down as I've been on this team, they aren't as bad as what that seven of eight stretch of losing games look like. They are better than that. And the hope would be that they turn things around today and they can get hot down the stretch and at least make something of this season that looked pretty lost after a gross game on Monday in Austin. It's like I said after the game, K-State's back in position to be in position. This doesn't change anything really besides it gives you another win and it is a big quad one game because the metrics love BYU. But it doesn't really mean anything unless you build off of it. Yep. And you, you can't come around in 48 hours and lose to this West Virginia yeah. team that's coming in because that ruins all of the momentum that you've had beforehand. And you look at the remaining schedule, every game outside of West Virginia from here on out, it's a quad one game. Yep. So the, these are the kind of games that you need to have. And this is also... That's a frustrating thing that I was thinking about. The Oklahoma State loss? Uh, I was going to say the Oklahoma State loss. The TCU the, loss, the, the Texas Tech loss. The Texas Tech loss, even, I think K-State is probably on the right side of the bubble right now if they win that. Yeah. But now it's, okay, well, you have to go 9-9, nine and nine, and that still might not be enough because of who your nine wins are. Yeah, I, that's going to be an interesting thing to watch and see, and that's why that Iowa State game is going to mean an awful lot come the yes. final Saturday of the regular season because you, even if K-State gets hot here and they don't win the game in Allen but they beat West Virginia and Cincinnati, you're probably still thinking to yourself they need that one to feel even remotely close to good and then obviously you can't have a bad loss in Kansas City. So we'll see how it plays out from and, there and, and everything else. And you just see where the chips fall because I I, I just keep going back to it. I, is nine wins enough when you would think that four would be against West Virginia, Oklahoma State, and UCF? Yeah. Is that enough? Other teams are going to get that benefit of the doubt. I think we'd have to look around the rest of the league and, and see how it goes. And we know that there are teams that they have gamed the system with yes. the net and everything else, Oklahoma being one of them. D.Y. brought it up after the game. He's like, Oklahoma, if they lose to Oklahoma State today, they, they better watch out because they might find themselves in some trouble. So it'll be fascinating to see. One other good thing about this win today, if you care about this, which I kind of do because I don't want to have to see K-State play on loser day in Kansas City, this win puts them ahead of Cincinnati and outside of the bottom four in the Big 12, which means that they would not play until Wednesday of the Big 12 tournament. It's a small thing, but big, especially for a team that I will say this to give people – hope and to think that I'm not such a you know Debbie Downer all the time K-State is good enough and has the talent to be one of those teams that makes a run and can beat good teams to win the NCAA tournament if they need to steal a bid it becomes a lot more attainable if you only have to play four games in four days as opposed to what is now five and five days in Kansas City. Well, I was even going to say you go one and one, but you play on Wednesday. It means a heck of a lot more than going one and one with your win being against West Virginia on Tuesday. It's true. So if you can get to Wednesday, that that's probably where you want to be because it means that you're probably playing either a quad one or a quad two game and you could win it. 
instead of playing yeah, a quad neutral three court, game against West neutral Virginia. court, those would probably all be quad one games. So yeah, so it, that will be fascinating to see at the end of the season because you all, you and I both talked about it beforehand yeah. about the tiebreakers in the Big Twelve. That holy nuts. cow, it's gonna be a mess at the end of the season. Yeah. Well, K State wins it 84 to 74 today over number 25 BYU. Another note to throw in there: K State had five players in double figures today. I'd have to go and look, but that's about got to be the only time that's happened this season. We know that four had been a magic number uh, outside of your big three. And one note on those guys, Cam Carter, you did that today with another not-so-great game from him. He's making his free throws, but he's not doing a whole lot else right now. So Cam Carter, there's even room for this version of K-State to play better. We'll see if the Cats get it on Monday night. Six o'clock, early tip against the Mountaineers of West Virginia, who they – Took a lead in the second half at Iowa State today. Probably feel a little bit broken because they ended up losing that game. So you would think that that's a game that K-State, they'd have a tough time losing it. They'd have to do something really wrong to make that happen. But we'll see. you got to play the games. K-State's had some whackers in, uh, in Bramlage already this year that didn't make sense in my head. We'll see how it goes on Monday. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.